Welcome back to the channel and today I'm going to show you guys how to make a screw in Blender. Now this is actually something that might look pointless. Why would I want to learn how to model a screw? But it can be harder than you think to do this sort of continual spiral without relying on some modifier. So I'm going to show you how to use the screw modifier. And then from there we're going to continue by leveling out the ends and then making the tip and then making this screw head. So it's a um, pretty simple approach to making a rather um, integrate looking thing like a screw. So I hope you guys enjoy this, learn a thing or two, and let's make a screw. So let's jump into Blender and just delete all the default objects to get started with. And we're gonna add in a circle, so Shift A, let's go to our mesh options, let's add in a circle. And we're gonna go into our edit mode and we wanna actually grab one of these verts and that's gonna become the vert that we're gonna spin around, right? So an easy way to do that is just to go into our front orthographic view. And the one we actually want is the one on the very end here, on our left, like that. And if you want to um, select all the other ones and delete them, just go Control I or Command I. That just inverses your selection and then you press Delete. Let's delete those verts. Now we have this one singular vert. We're gonna go E to extrude and Z and extrude that guy up like so, just for now. And let's go over to our modifiers. Add modifier, let's click on search. We're gonna type in screw, and let's go ahead and click on screw. And now it's spinning around like this. But I'm gonna show you something really cool. If we select this and we right click and we go subdivide, we can grab this vertex here and go G, X and move it out. Now it's kind of pointy. And the way this becomes a screw is by coming here to the screw amount and bringing it up. Now, your value could be different depending on how high you've made this. So you can either scale this up on a Z, or you can come here or a combination of the two. So I'm just gonna get roughly in place, like so. And let's go ahead and take the iterations, and let's make it like 12 just to get started with. So this is the amount of threads you're gonna have. Then if you go into our front orthographic view, we can go G and then X and move this in. And by doing that, you can make a much narrower screw. So I'm gonna maybe do something similar to that. So bring it in like so. And then I'm gonna right click and go subdivide, subdivide again, and then just grab this vertex. Bring it in here, grab this vertex down here, tuck it in over here, like so. And now this is looking more screw-like, okay? So you can, you know, you can keep doing that. You can grab these and subdivide them. And you can tighten up some of these things here by bringing these in like so, but it's completely up to you. Just making a very simple kind of screw. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna tab back out. I'm gonna probably take this up to 15 to make a nice looking screw. One of the issues we're having here though is that um, this is not actually one um, continuous object going up. This is still a separate mesh over here that kind of overlaps a little bit. So what we can do is we can go ahead and enable merge here, but I find that this never really works that well to merge these um, points together. So what I'm gonna do is turn that off. I'm gonna go to add modifier and search for a weld. You get a weld modifier. And now if we were to drag up this distance, you can see these kind of snap together and now that becomes one mesh all the way along there. So let's go ahead and apply our screw. Let's apply our weld. And now if we go in here, this is all one um, object. So if you select the vertex here and you go control plus and you just hold it in, you can see it should go up like straight instead of going around in a column. That's gonna be important. So now let's, while we're in edit mode, go to the bottom here and let's select all of these bottom verts. Like so going up to this point over here in the corner, then you're gonna press F3 and you're gonna go merge and you're gonna go merge at last. So the last vertex we selected. And let's just go G and kind of drag it like so. So we have a sharp point. Let's just tuck this in a little bit around here and maybe just bring this guy in just a bit. There we go. Now we're gonna go Shift Alt, left click on this edge and it's gonna loop select this all the way around. E to extrude and Z to bring it down and then S, Z, zero, hit enter. And let's just bring it up to here and let's enable proportional editing and let's go S and roll our middle mouse button just to make it small and let's just bring this in like so. And then E to extrude and Z, S to scale again. And then let's just go F3 and go merge. And let's just merge. In fact, let's just press F and fill that for now. And scale's really small, that's all. And now we have the tip of our screw like that. All right, so let's do something at the top. I'm gonna to turn off proportional editing for now. Shift Alt, left click on this edge over here. S, Z, I'm gonna flatten it a little bit. 
And then I'm gonna select these guys over here, these edges running along here like so, all the way down to this corner. F3, and I'm just gonna go merge at last. And then let's bring this here. Shift Alt, left click on this edge. G, Z, just bring it up like so. Then E to extrude and Z. S, Z, zero, just to flatten it. And then go Shift Alt S and just round it out a little bit. And now we have the top of our screw. Now what we're gonna do is go E to extrude again and Z. Then E to extrude, S to scale a little bit and then G to move it slightly. And then in our front view, we can go E to extrude, Z to go up and let's go S to scale like so. Then E to extrude and Z. Let's go about here. And then we're gonna go Control F with those edges selected and go Grid Fill. Let's get our Grid Fill option and let's come over here to the top. And let's go and increase the segments to something like four. And let's rotate this until it's lined up properly, like this. Then we're gonna go I to inset, bring it all in. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to our face, our edge select option here and select this edge that runs along here, these four edges and go S, X, zero, hit enter. And then grab these four over here, S, X, zero and hit enter. And then just select both of these um, four sets of edges and then go S, X, scale them a bit closer together like this. And then go to your face select option and then just select these faces over here. And then go I to inset them a little bit. And then you're gonna go E to extrude and Z and extrude down like so. And let's go Shift R, left click, drag in an edge over here. Shift R, left click, one over here, same over here. And then Control R in here, left click, slide one up. Control R, left click, slide one down. And now we can go to our modifiers. We can go search and get a sub and get a subdivision surface. But now the problem is, if we go out, it looks good over here, but we've lost the sharpness to our screw. So all we're gonna do here, is we're gonna come to this edge, Shift Alt, left click and select this loop and it should loop all the way down. Then we're gonna go Shift E and just drag and add a bevel edge or a bevel weight to this, like so. And then we're gonna tab out, then we're gonna right click and we're gonna go Shade Auto Smooth. And now with the automatic smoothing, that should look nice and sharp, but the rest of the stuff that should be smooth will be smooth. But let's bump this up in the viewport with the subdiv. And now we have a screw that looks really nice. And we've, uh, you know, you can now save this, use it in your assets um, library if you need a screw. So I really hope you guys have enjoyed this and that you've learned something about modeling and how we can make rather complicated looking shapes with simpler um, techniques when we use um, modifiers. It kind of like gives us a bit more of a tool set there. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this and I'll see you next time.